I don't want to pay for all of these little subscriptions. It's so annoying. But anyway, that's a rant. That's a soapbox. <laughs> love always endures welcome back to my channel and if you are new here welcome so today I'm going to be talking to you about a subject that is really near and dear to my heart and it is budget and money management and I know for a lot of people that's probably not a very fun subject but it is important and it can be fun when done correctly and I'm not saying that I have it all together or that I know what I'm doing hundred percent all the time however I have learned a couple of things and a couple of tricks of the trade and I want to share those things with you all today so today I want to talk about ways that you can save money in the long run by making daily small cuts now. One of my recommendations would be if you can do it yourself, to do it yourself. Now obviously there may be a learning curve. A lot of us learn some new things when this pandemic hit, right? But even things that outside of the pandemic you can do on your own would be very beneficial in helping you to save money. For instance, for all of my homeowners out there or people who maybe rent property or basically people who have a yard, okay? Um, one thing that I would suggest is doing your own yard work and also doing your own in-home bug prevention. Yard work is pretty expensive. Depending on the size of your yard, you could spend anywhere from 30 to $100 every two weeks getting your yard manicured. Um, with a good lawnmower, edger, and blower, you could do your yard yourself. I know it is hard work. I know it's hot and sweaty. I know there's bugs. But if you're looking to save that money, it's still beneficial to you. Right now, I live on a quarter acre yard and I cut my grass every 10 to 14 days. I will be posting a yard work video very soon with just some beginner tips on how to take care of your yard. I save about $50 every single time I do yard work, which basically means I'm saving about $100 a month, which is about $1,200 a year, give or take. I'll post a link below for the place that I purchased my pest control solution from, but basically it's called DIY Pest Control and you can just order it and it literally lasts you forever because it's in a concentrated jug. I have to do it every three months. I bought the solution for like $20 two years ago and I probably have another five or six years worth out of the bottle. I don't know how much it costs to have pest control come regularly, but I can tell you that I save quite a bit of money by doing it on my own. Also, for those of you who get your waxes done outside of the home, I understand certain waxes, it really is better to have somebody else who can see better and can get a better angle, but some waxes, the easy ones, like bikini waxes and armpit waxes, are super, super easy to do on your own at home, and they save you a lot of money. So if you do the math, there's people spending upwards of $70 to get waxes done when waxes that are super simple and easy like that can be done with a $10 bottle of wax that's gonna last you several months. Here's some other small tips just for everyday life. How many of you pay for a Netflix and you have multiple friends who pay for a Netflix? How many of you, better question, <laughs> how many of you mooch off of someone else when it comes to their Netflix? Well, for those of you who are like me who don't necessarily feel comfortable mooching but hate subscriptions, like I really do hate monthly subscriptions. The only thing I wanna pay monthly are my bills. You know what I mean? Like my actual utility bills and my mortgage. I don't want to pay for all of these little subscriptions. It's so annoying. But anyway, that's a rant. That's a soapbox. So for Netflix, what I did was I reached out to a friend who had a Netflix as well and I asked her if I could hop on her account. And what I do is I pay her my half of the Netflix bill every six months. So every September 1st and every March 1st, I cash up her $40. Basically the bill is $160. She pays 80 a year and I pay 80 a year, but I pay six months at a time. Does that make sense? And it pretty much saves me some money every month and it's super, super easy. Another thing that I do to kind of save money is take shortcuts, I guess you can call it. So um, finding different ways that you can pay for a service but not pay all the way for a service. For instance, there are ways to make your nail trips not cost so much. And for me, that meant I was doing my own manicures at home, so that saved me an extra $10. And, oh, and I was taking my nail polish off myself. That saved me $5, okay? And I know it don't seem like a lot, but it saved me money. Also, I don't get my toes done year round. I mean, let's be honest, ladies. We are not out here with our toes out and about in the winter time. And again, I was doing in-home pedicures. If you wanna see a video on how to do those, let me know and I'll make sure to make one for you all. But it's a pretty simple process. I get my hair trimmed professionally every three months. 
I figured out a long time ago that trimming at home, dusting my ends, whatever I was trying to do was not working out. Obviously what I'm about to tell you doesn't work for every single hairstylist. However, my hairstylist, I've been knowing her for almost a decade now and she allows me to actually shampoo, condition, deep condition, detangle my hair myself. I can come into her salon with wet hair, she'll blow it out, trim it for me for $15 and I'm outie. I don't get it styled, I leave looking like the lioness that I am, like <laughs> literally I'm just in and out. It doesn't take anything but 20 minutes and it's totally worth my time and my money. Also too, for those of you who have pets and who pay for flea prevention, the recommendation is to have flea prevention all year. Trust me, I know that that's the best thing, especially depending on where you live, what climate, what state, I get it. However, as you know, your girl is always trying to save a buck, okay? And I just can't get it through my thick skull why I have to pay for flea treatments in the middle of January when it's freezing cold here still. You see what I'm saying? The fleas are dead. Now mind you, there's still always a chance that you can have fleas. And if you have ever had a flea infestation, Oh my God. So the way that I get around this is I only buy six months worth of flea treatments at a time. So I basically make sure that during the warmest months of the year, Roxy is covered. When the fleas start to go dormant, I don't buy that stuff. And it saves me about 70 bucks a year. Another really big thing is grocery shopping. A lot of times it's just super easy to door dash or curbside or pop in and pop out somewhere and go get you a quick meal. Grocery wise, things are so much easier for the price of one really nice dinner at a restaurant, let's just say your meal is $18 and then you get a $3 drink and you get a $5 dessert. How much is that? 26 bucks, let's include a tip. Let's say you just spent $32. Do you know how much food you could buy for $32 at the grocery store? The grocery store? It's, it's time to start repositioning your brain and thinking how you can save in one place so that you can spend the money elsewhere. You're gonna wanna make some investments into some long-term solutions. So for instance, all of my glasses wearers out there, oh my gosh, I'm not wearing my glasses. I am blind. I have, I wear a negative 5.75 and a negative six. Okay, so my glasses are very expensive. I require high index lenses if I don't want to have bug eyes. And it normally costs me about $300 every two years to get a pair of glasses. Not to mention prescription contacts. I'm usually looking at, if I want like a year's worth, I'm usually looking at about $150 to $200. So you do the math on that and it adds up. Well, I've decided I wanna go ahead and get LASIK. I've already done the math and found that I would save a lot of, a lot of money, y'all. A lot of money by getting LASIK and not ever having to pay for glasses and contacts ever again. I get a yearly eye exam. Quick, easy, and simple. It's covered by my insurance. Like, why haven't I done this sooner? If you find that you're always renting something, like just on a regular basis, you have to rent it, it makes sense to just go ahead and invest in it and buy it, honestly. To buy one, to have it, and then you can use it as much as you want and you don't have to pay a rental fee for it every single time. Whether it's a piece of yard equipment, whether it's a tool, whatever it is, a lot of times if you find yourself spending so much money, if you sit and you do the math on how much you spend renting this item in one year, how much would it cost to buy it? Another way that I skimp is carpets. So um, the recommendation for getting your carpet cleaned is every six months. But I purchased the spot bot, which cost me about $100. I have a pet. If you have pets, if you have kids, uh, if you eat in rooms besides your kitchen, this might be beneficial for you if you have to deal with little stains and spills and stuff like that. I basically use my spot bot when there are puppy accidents. I do in-home puppy boarding and sometimes there are accidents that happen and I use my spot bot. It's super, super easy. It takes care of the spot and I have confidence that the area is actually clean. So I use that all year round if I need to and I only pay to get my carpets clean professionally once a year. So that saves me a couple hundred dollars doing that as well because I can keep my carpets clean on my own for the most part here in the house. And honestly, the only reason I get them done every year is because I have a pet. I feel like if I didn't have a pet, I'd probably get them done every 18 months. All right, y'all. 
I went ahead and tallied everything up. I did all the math and I'm gonna give you the quick rundown on how much I save in a year, just on a few simple cuts that I've chosen to make around the house. Now, I understand that there's a balance that has to take place, right? Time is money. So if I choose to do it on my own and I save some money, I might lose some time. So obviously you can only do some of these things on your own if you have the time. And a lot of times, especially now in a pandemic, we do. A lot of times we just don't want to do it. So with that being said, I'm gonna go down my list and we'll tally everything up and see how we're looking. I save about $1,200 a year doing my own lawn care, $120 a year by doing my own pest control, $360 a year at least by waxing at home, $80 a year by sharing a Netflix with a friend, $700 a year doing my nails at home, and $225 on hair from just going and getting a blowout and trim opposed to getting a full service every time I just need a trim. $70 a year on only purchasing flea medication for the hottest six months of the year. I save about $200 a year on carpet cleaning by just getting my carpets cleaned once a year and using my spot bot instead. So that adds up to a grand total of $2,955. So I'm basically saving three grand a year at least just from making those cuts. And trust me, when you get into a routine of doing certain things on your own, it doesn't become a chore anymore. Like it would sound like a chore right now. Like, man, I gotta start doing my nails on my own and my waxing and my hair and da 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 da. Trust me, if you slowly work yourself up to it, over time, it becomes a lot easier. It just becomes part of the things that you just do on your self-care night. Obviously, there are a bunch of other things out there. Please feel free to leave comments on your thoughts on any additional tips and tricks you might have. I love healthy dialogue. So if y'all have picked up on anything else in your life day to day where you can save money by cutting back, let me know because as you know, I am more than willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy if it's gonna help me to save some money because what can I do with 3,000 extra dollars? I could leave the country a couple of times. Oh, y'all, I should do a budgeting series on traveling. That'll be, ooh, I need to write that down. So for $3,000, I could leave the country at least twice. I could pretty much pay for my LASIK procedure. I could buy two giant schnauzers. I could almost pay a full year worth of my car note. You could buy three iMac computers. You could put a down payment on a house. You could purchase two Louis Vuitton masks for the pandemic. You could probably purchase yourself a whole new wardrobe for $3,000, especially if you focus on like your basics and stuff like that. Easy, easy. Basically, there's just a lot of things you could do with 3,000 extra dollars every year and that's all from making cutbacks. So obviously, people spend their money on what's important to them. Always keep that in mind. People will spend their money on wherever they've prioritized to spend their money. You have to know where your priority lies when it comes to spending your money. Because even a budget bug like me knows how to drop a big lump sum of money on something, but it's gonna be something that is important to me that I feel is gonna help me in the long run to save money over time or to be more sustainable or just to have a better quality of life. Don't be mistaken, just because someone penny pinches doesn't mean that they might not drop a grip of money somewhere, but they're penny pinching so that they can do that and they can put that money exactly where they want it to go. That's all I have for you all today. I hope that what I said was educational and that something stuck out to you and that it's something that you feel like you can use for the future and help you save your coins. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment box. Like I said, I'm looking forward to some healthy dialogue and discussions when it comes to saving money and being good stewards of the money that we've earned. Also, make sure that you like and subscribe and click that notification bell so that you can know about my future uploads and you can see what I got going on on my channel. So I hope to see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. Goodbye.